next we have what I would consider to be two guys that are really fucking interesting, really full of personality. One guy didn't show the full his full palette yet. And the other guy was really interesting back then. And he did show it. D'Lo Brown versus Edge. D'Lo Brown having a feud with PMS, which is Terry Runnels and some black chick. My ignorance ceases to amaze me. I'm pretty sure a lot of these WWE fan, these wrestling fanboys and these guys that know that history, especially in the Attitude Era, they'll probably say, how do you not know this person's name? You are an asshole. Watch your mouth, you ignorant fuck. But sometimes I just don't fucking know. That's not what this review series is about. It's about you getting refreshed and seeing something that isn't our weekly bullshit in WWE. So, D'Lo Brown versus Edge. I originally thought that this was going to be the match of the night. This is what I thought was going to be the best one. Why? Because D'Lo Brown actually has an interesting fucking character and... I like seeing Edge this way as opposed to what he was in his last few years. The contrast in personality and the in-ring work is good. I liked all the high-flying shit, the maneuvers, the technicality. Deal Brown's charisma, his skills as a brawler. And it all just works together very well. Up until Terry Runnels sort of tries to annoy and catch the attention of D'Lo Brown. At this point, I think Edge is just going to capitalize and get his victory, but no. No, that's not what happens. What happens is he approaches her, she falls over, and she starts acting like her water is breaking. That postponed, that, that, that kills the match. The match is, like, over. Everyone's, like, worried about her health and well-being because she lands on her back and she's, like, suffering. And it's supposed to be, like, Damn, this is crazy, but I just think, wow, this is stupid as hell. Fucking. What's gonna happen to my baby? Ah, 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 for fucking 10 minutes straight, and everyone's stressing out and shit. I mean, if I had any less testosterone, I would say it's tasteless, but for me, it's like, you can enjoy in one way. You can enjoy in the sense that. <laughs> This is so stupid, it's funny. And that's kind of how I enjoy it, that little segment. <laughs> I mean, it did advance the storyline, which is good. And we got to see a few minutes of a match. This is why I kind of felt SmackDown is, was necessary. And it needed to happen when it happened. Because the, the matches are going too quickly because you have so many talents. The pace is a little too fast for me. Granted, I'm not falling asleep watching the show. But, still, damn. That is a rough, rough sound. Next, we have the Stooges versus Kane. They didn't expect this to happen to them, but somebody had to take punishment over all the trauma that Shane McMahon faced. I mean, quite frankly, I think that's a little bit of a pathetic line going for them. But essentially, that's how Shane's character works. He's supposed to be a spoiled brat and shit like that. And really, I wanted Kurt Angle to give him a piece of his mind right now. At that storyline in 1999, but it'd be a while before they get to feud. Be a while. So, essentially, here's Shane trying to be an obnoxious ref again for the second time of the night. And of course, after Kane kicks the Stooges' asses, and they're just, they didn't want any of it. They were fucking... They didn't want any of that shit. He, he's about to, like, kick Shane's ass, too, because Shane was like, being all loud and obnoxious. Like, yeah, I kicked your ass. Watch out for that chair that they're about to hit you with and shit like that. 
But of course, he Shane doesn't get his yet. I like Shane McMahon's character, but this angle, they really made it effective in me disliking him. That's what they wanted, and that's what they got. Who else? Uh, and, he, and he's not the kind of character that needs to look strong. It's not like he's a main eventer who's going to win world champion after world champion. Let's see. Who's next? Oh, and there's some cryptic segments with this guy that's chained up and shit, so... If you want to know if that exists, yeah, that exists. You should watch it for just for that. That gonna spoil everything. Al Snow versus... Let's see, what was his name? Jesse... I said his name before. How the fuck do I... He's with, like, X-Pac, uh, Jesse. Well, they had the match of the night. They had the fucking match of the night. Th this is, like, what I like about the hardcore matches. It kind of adds some... It, it makes it more refreshing because you get to take it to parts of the area that isn't the ring. And because of that, new camera angles, new perspectives, sort of makes you feel like you're less in gridlock watching it. And when you're less in gridlock, anybody can enjoy it better. There were a lot of VCW chants. In terms of being hardcore wrestling, yeah, this is it, and it has great storytelling. Would you like to go for dinner? Oh, yeah, hold on. Of course, let's see, road, road Dog. I guess let's just call him Road Dog, Jesse James. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Match of the night, and a title change is made. He wins the hardcore title. And finally, your main event, which is Mankind versus The Rock. And this is the one thing that actually got me hype. I didn't expect Stone Cold to show up. At this episode. I didn't expect him to actually make an appearance. But he did at the last minute. And the match itself was great. A lot of great in-ring storytelling. Fighting and shit like that. You gotta see both sides of the wrestlers. Where The Rock is the superstar. And Mankind is his underdog. And you gotta see how that dynamic works. But then Stone Cold comes in at the last minute. And... He makes a difference, and Mankind wins the title. So that's the second title change. In. It's funny how similar the WWE title is to the hardcore title in here, here at this time in 99. I keep talking about this episode like it is in the present. Like this, right now, this video is happening in 1999 or something, which it's not. It's in 2012, but... Sometimes I feel like I'm jumping my mentality into something different than today. Just to fully experience it. Experience it from that time frame. The Clinton years. A lot of references to Clinton were made in this episode, by the way. All in all, great episode. It's not as slow pace and interesting in that kind of fashion to the ruthless aggression but it is quick pace feels very WCW ECW that kind of trinity instead of instead of what was there at the ruthless aggression which was an amalgamation of different ingredients essentially nostalgia in some parts, and some a lot of dream matches, a lot of new talents coming in and stepping up. A lot of two main event matches, two fucking 
mid card matches and two fucking special attraction matches. So a lot of dream matches were in present around that time as opposed to uh, 99 where it was all about the trash TV. It was all experimental and less about doing what we couldn't do during the Monday Night Wars. So that's kind of me explaining what I think, evaluating the differences between the Attitude Era and Ruthless Aggression in a very strange, often grammatically confusing manner. Hope you enjoyed this review. This is Mr. Waka 7 and suck the dick. Nigga. That's right, I mixed it up. Suck the dick. The dick. Dick.